In this video, we're going to talk about the level design of the cliffside area. So if you ask people what they like about Gloomwood, I think the most common answer you'll see is people love the level design. And I think the reason why is because the level design pretty consistently rewards the player's curiosity. If you explore enough, you'll find hidden caches of resources. You'll find handwritten notes that make the game world feel lived in. You'll find shortcuts, you'll find secret rooms. There's a lot to uncover. So it creates this nice positive feedback loop where the more you explore, the more the game makes you want to keep exploring. However, at the end of the cliffside level, there's a moment where the opposite happens, where we run into a negative feedback loop. That's what we're gonna to explore today. So at the end of the cliffs, there are two entrances in the market. There's the main gate entrance right there. And if we follow this path to the right, we eventually find the cistern entrance. And to the right of this path is a cliff that falls off into the water below. I think a natural question a player might have is, what happens if I explore that way? Maybe I'll find an underwater sewer entrance, maybe I'll find a cave with some useful resources. Not sure what it's going to be, but let's dive in and find out. And we die when we hit the water. Now, in a vacuum, this makes perfect sense. Like in real life, a human is not going to be able to survive that fall. But up until this point in the game, the game has been pretty consistent that you can fall into water from any height and you'll be safe. I think the best demonstration of this is if we go back to the caves area. There's a moment at the end of the caves where we can throw ourselves off an even taller cliff. We fling ourselves this way. This is a much longer drop, but we're safe when we hit the water. In real life, this doesn't make any sense. A person would definitely die if they fell that far into water. But in video game logic, it makes perfect sense. You think back to games like Half-Life or Super Mario 64, the rules are pretty clear. You can fall into water from any height and you'll be safe. And furthermore, if we explore this body of water, we find a hidden cache of resources, just like we were talking about before. So, pretty consistent rules so far. Water is safe, and it's a good thing. And there's one other example I want to highlight here. There's an interesting case at the end of the fishery level, where if we explore underneath this cabin, we'll find that there's this long drop into a shallow body of water, where normally a fall from that height would deal fall damage. And we did, in fact, hit the ground underneath this water, but all the fall damage was prevented by this teeny tiny shallow little body of water, less than a foot deep. So the signals are pretty clear. Up until this point, you can dive into water from any height into water of any depth, and you'll be safe. So that's why it's so confusing and dissatisfying that if we fall into this water, we die. But the game has told us pretty consistently so far, ask and you shall receive. Your curiosity will be rewarded. So what does our curiosity tell us to do? Curiosity says, maybe we're just falling too fast. Maybe if we slide down this cliff instead of jumping off of it, we'll survive. So we'll shove ourselves into this corner and gradually slide down the cliff gradually making progress towards the water below at a much safer speed until we eventually hit the water and we die instantly. So instead of our curiosity being rewarded, it's kind of being punished because we asked a simple question and we got a dissatisfying answer. And that answer was, this is a death barrier. The rules of the game world have changed. No longer is it the case that water is safe, it's now deadly. So we find a dissatisfying answer, and that leads us to ask another question, which is, when in the game world did these rules change? And this is a pattern that ends up repeating itself several times. Each time we ask a question about the game world, we receive a dissatisfying answer and the urge to ask another question. And this kind of, kind of sends us tumbling down a rabbit hole of negative experiences. 
So if we explore the cliffside level a little bit further, with enough testing and enough exploration, we eventually find the answer to our previous question of when in the game world do the rules change? And the answer is right here, just before the lighthouse. If we dive into the water here, into this very shallow body of water, we're safe. And with a little bit of exploration, we find this invisible barrier. So let's reload our quick save. So we found the moment in the level where the rules change. If we fall to the right of that fence, we survive. If we fall to the left of the fence, we die. So again, we found kind of a dissatisfying answer to our question. We've peeled back a layer of the game world, we've peeled back a layer of the onion, and we're starting to be exposed to the fact that the game world isn't particularly consistent. It's starting to feel less like a world that we're exploring and more like a level that was created by a game designer. And so having discovered the barrier, the invisible barrier that cuts the game world in half, the next question, the next point of curiosity is this ledge. It's kind of a crazy coincidence that the fence and the invisible barrier happen to intersect this little green ledge that we're looking at here. So let's keep following the trail of breadcrumbs. Let's ask what happens if we explore this ledge? And our curiosity is again punished with this weird interaction where we can stand on this ledge, which makes sense. If we travel in this direction, we run into an invisible barrier where there's absolutely no visual indication of why it would be here. But if we approach this barrier from the opposite side, we discover this strange interaction where we can pass through the invisible barrier in one direction, like so, but we can't go back again. So again, our curiosity is punished by revealing more of the game world that doesn't make sense. We're starting to discover that not only is there an invisible barrier here, but that the behavior of the invisible barrier isn't even consistent. It prevents passage in one direction, but allows passage in another. So this is the negative feedback loop I was talking about before. Each time we explore, each time we indulge our curiosity, we find a dissatisfying answer and the urge to ask another question, which in turn has another dissatisfying answer. I think this is probably the weakest aspect of the level design so far, is this little moment. And it may seem really niche, but keep in mind, this all arose from very natural curiosity that we started with. We rewind time a little bit. The original question that sent us tumbling down this weird little rabbit hole is, can we explore to the right of the cistern entrance? That's all, that's all we wanted to know. And the, the answer that we were expecting as curious players was, we're gonna find something that rewards our curiosity. And what ended up happening instead is we got sent tumbling down this rabbit hole of, kind of unraveling the integrity of the game world and finding these weird interactions that the player has no business finding. It just doesn't make any sense. So what's the solution to this? How can we fix this? I think there's two natural solutions that jump out. One is to get rid of the death barrier, allow the player to dive into this water and explore freely because that's consistent with the game rules so far. But if there's some compelling reason for why the player should not be allowed to go down there, an alternative solution is just to make this drop look more dangerous. So if we approach from here, this drop looks inviting because up until now, we know that if we fall into water, we'll be safe. So a simple solution is just to change the level geometry 
to make this drop look more foreboding. So instead of having water down below, have it be a jagged rocky surface that looks like it would kill you if you landed on it. And instead of having this cliff taper outwards, which invites the player to try sliding down it, have it taper inwards so that sliding is impossible and make that texture, that shape, consistent from here through to the end of the level. So that regardless of where the player tries to indulge their curiosity, they should always peek out over here and see something that looks foreboding, see something that looks deadly. You look over the edge, you look down and you say, this will kill me. Because then if they indulge their curiosity, the signals that the game is sending them will match the outcome that they experience at the bottom, which is instant death. So that's the key concept is I think in order to make the end of the cliffside level feel consistent with the game world so far, it's just a matter of making the signals that the level design sends to the player match the outcome and either A, allow the player to explore and reward their curiosity or B, shape the level in such a way that it dissuades the player, that it diminishes their curiosity and makes them feel like they're in danger. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time.